midfield has been reverberating to the sound of fighting talk from Graham Souness as the FA Cup favourites try to absorb the latest bad news on their injury front. The absence of Ian Rush means that Steve McManaman will play up front with Dean Saunders. Mark Walters coming in on the left-hand side. Rush joining Barnes, Whelan, Thomas and Tanner on the treatment table. But on the bright side, Rob Jones has quickly recovered from his Wembley injury and Steve Nicholl and Jan Mulby are also available again. Steve Harkness stands in at left-back for the suspended David Burrows. We can put up a normal 4-4-2 formation, but don't you believe it? Liverpool players have the freedom within that framework to go anywhere they like, play anywhere they like, and I expect them to do that tonight. Well, Ipswich have a luxury not afforded to Liverpool this season. The same team for the eighth game in a row. John Walk was worried he wouldn't be able to return to Anfield because of a back problem. Ipswich, understandably, are taking a chance on the man of the match from the first meeting. There is one change from that game. It's on the bench where Paul Goddard is preferred to David Lowe. John Lowe will also send out his team in a 4-4-2 formation. Big onus on the top two, Jason Dezel and Chris Kowomnia. 27 goals between them this year. But watch for number eight, Steve Palmer. I think he's got a marking job on Jan Moby tonight. Alf Baksh is the referee, as he was at Portman Road on uh, that Sunday, ten days ago, where the match was ruined by the wind, but the conditions excellent tonight. Rob Jones has now sampled Wembley for his country. Will the fairy tale of his first season with Liverpool end with another visit in the FA Cup final? John Walker has been there with Ipswich back in 1978 and he was a winner against Arsenal. I don't know whether it's psychology, but in the Liverpool programme tonight, they spelt his name W-A-L-K, that sort of walk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was too impressed by that. That's one that name they should have got right. That's a reference to his age, Martin, not his name. <laughs> when the wind was uh, howling around at Portman Road, Bruce Grobelaar gave an exceptional, dis exceptional display of goalkeeping. And he had the opportunity to meet again a young man who stood alongside him, the goalkeeper tonight for Ipswich. They were goalkeeper and fan together in Vancouver. Pre and it was a big thrill for Forrest to meet up with Grobelaar again in the first match. They both had clean sheets, although it was uh, Ipswich who came closer to scoring, twice hitting the frame of the Liverpool goal through John Walk and through a strange effort towards his own goal by Ray Houghton. Ipswich still looking for the right formula then to produce a win at Anfield. 29 games here and not one victory to show for the efforts of some talented teams in the past. Well, this side is in second place in the second division. They'll have read detailed reports of Liverpool's lapse in East Anglia on Saturday, losing 3-0 at Norwich. But John Lyle, who jousted with the Reds so often in the past with West Ham, has warned his Ipswich side that like a wounded animal, Liverpool are most dangerous when they've just been hurt. Steve Harkness with a throw. Stockwell. Palmer is number eight. Dazelle. Palmer again. And it was Milton. Grobelaar's come right out here and <laughs> done it decisively, but he might well be annoyed at the way Ipswich were starting to tip-tap their way through then. Well, Mike Stockwell, who's set out at right back, found himself in a brilliant position and only the pace of the ball along this very slick surface stopped him being in on Bruce Grobelaar. Foul by right on Kiwamia. I think the fifth is a time 
Ipswich should feel that they can come here and take the game to Liverpool. Normally teams come here, Martin, and are very wary early on, try and say, let's keep it clean sheet, let's keep it tight for 20 minutes and see how it goes. But Ipswich, after that 3-0 defeat that Liverpool suffered at the weekend, Ipswich will be here saying, John Lennon, I'm sure, saying, if we get the chance, if we get the ball, let's get it forward. And walks come in, Linigan as well, and it came off right, and finally off Steve Whitten, behind for a goal kick. Since the first match, Liverpool have uh, slipped to fifth in the first division. Walters. Foul by Witten. Ipswich did play on Merseyside last Friday. Just through the tunnel from here at uh, Tranmere and won by a goal to nil which is uh, particularly pleasing in any circumstances but with this match hard on the heels of that they feel they might have uh, won a psychological point or two Harkness now Nicol Houghton was just trying to glance it in field to Saunders or McManaman. Type of run that he's very good at though, Ray Hout. The really lines up on that right side. He's always prepared to make that diagonal run into the danger area. Kiwamia. to take the free kick he likes to uh, switch the play perhaps not quite what he had in mind then as Jason Dezel was making himself available on this near side but the ball came veering well behind him Saunders misjudged Walk who missed little at Portman Road really did have a splendid game and very nearly scored with a header that backed against Grobelar's crossbar just before half-time. Kevin Johnson also had a chance in the first match. Ipswich certainly had the edge. Kawamia and uh, Wright was there first. Mark Wright now back in the England scene, of course, and finding, I'm sure to his surprise, that Rob Jones was in the team last week against France as well. Jones actually picked up an injury that he uh, attributed to wearing new boots for the England game and missed out at Norwich as Liverpool had to piece together a side on Saturday. The first division not their main priority. One senses at the moment, although Graham Souness would never admit to that, of course. That's for sure. And until it's mathematically impossible for Liverpool to win the league, there's no way Graham Souness's players will ever dream of giving that up. Liverpool, of course, still have uh, the FA Cup and the UEFA Cup with their two games with Genoa coming up. Witten. The filling in the sandwich between Hartness and Walters. Mal Graham Souness says calling his men to stand up and be counted and not to feel that somebody has uh, run over a black cat here or gone under too many ladders things have gone wrong on the uh, injury side of things so often are they going to go wrong on the field here Stockwell and Grubelar kept his shape there and was strong enough to deal with it by the near post as it was really belted towards goal by Stockwell well that's twice that Stockwell has got himself in a position totally unmarked in Liverpool's penalty area just pulls away there and he's totally unmarked Chris Scrobler does well to beat it away Linigan waiting by the near post and Walk was uh, coming in Scrobler has to watch it go behind Steve Nicholl dealing with the danger with a great deal of difficulty it is difficult to mark John Ward he starts so far out you see him at the edge of the 18 yard line there that's where he starts his run for and when you pick up pace and are attacking a ball like that it's very difficult to mark 
And that was Mulby who got his head to it. Walters checking back in there. And uh, Thompson would have preferred that to drop onto his left foot. But no sign of inhibitions here from Ipswich Town. We've got a great little tactic, Martin, when they get three kicks about them halfway and this right-hand side. Steve Whitten being all, all of six foot plus and against Steve Harkness, who really hasn't got that much height. What they do is try and isolate Steve Whitten against Harkness and play the ball straight above him. And that's exactly what happened in that situation that they got the chance from. McManaman. Walters. Forrest caught it and was straight away looking to use the ball until he realised that there was nothing on for him. Dazelle. Kiwamia. And uh, too far in front of Gavin Johnson. Well, Jason Dazelle actually given instructions by John Lyle to operate in the opening 20 minutes, a little behind Chris Kawamia. But because Ipswich have had uh, a good share of the ball, he's actually been able to ignore those instructions. It was designed perhaps to try and uh, take the steam out of a fast Liverpool start that Ipswich might have expected, but they haven't allowed that to happen. And the other thing we thought would happen, that was Steve Palmer being very tight on Jan Moby is exactly right. Palmer's got himself as close to Moby every time Ipswich have lost the ball as he can. And it's been noticeable that he's had very little of the ball early on, Jan Moby. Just uh, biting his nails there. Kenneth Dalgleish, Esquire. One of the few times, I suppose, he's been at Anfield in recent years and been able to relax and watch a game. He didn't look very relaxed, did he? <laughs> no, he probably still wondering about that defeat of Blackburn uh, last night at Cambridge. Well, he won't be happy about that, that's for sure. Here's Walk. Just too long for Dizel. Well, Liverpool have played Port Vale and Stoke and Bristol Rovers and had problems in the uh, first match this season. Come through well the second time. Well, John Walk, who began that level of the FA Cup, that was his debut as a central defender, as he is tonight. He won't even like this uh, to be described as the twilight of his career. Walters getting the better of Stockwell. Oh, Forrest, I'm not sure he was in the best position there. He might have been badly stranded if McManaman had made contact in front of him. Here's Harkness. Houghton, Saunders trying to get away behind Thompson, the ball didn't come that way, Kiwamia. Witten, Dazelle making a move ahead of him. And Thompson coming in to try and unsettle the Liverpool marking. Well, this is a tremendous ball from Steve Witten, look at the curl on that. And as Thompson comes in, Rob Jones does a good job in just putting him off enough. But I actually thought Steve McManaman at the other end had the better chance. Just for a second, I thought he was just getting in ahead of the goalkeeper, just to nod into the empty net. Not too sure whether the young lad was unsighted or whether it just took a deflection to take it away from him. Ten minutes gone in this fifth round replay in the FA Cup. Nil nil in terrible conditions at Portman Road, which took a lot the skill of both sides walk conceding the corner oh and Ipswich caught a little napping here by the short one McManaman losing out to Milton well here's Kiwamia four Liverpool players around him and the odds were overwhelmingly against Chris Kiwamia then yeah, he just wanted to check on it a little bit, try and hold it up, give some of his teammates a chance to come and join him. Well, you can see the top crammed to capacity, which can be so intimidating to the opposition, but Ipswich are handling it well. But there's a long way to go. 
Great tackle by Gavin Johnson. Tazell inside him. Here he is. Oh, that wasn't the time to uh, lose his balance. Marsh. McManaman has given it back to Johnson. He's found Milton. Kiwomia allowed to turn. Oh, and there was a chance then of being more direct for Chris Kiwomia. I think you spot on there, Martin. Chris Kiwomia with 15 goals already this season. You would have expected him to have driven into the danger. Drive into the box. He knows the chance of getting a penalty where somebody's going to tackle him. Better chance of doing that. Surprised he chose the option of passing. Well, maybe that's the first sign of being intimidated by playing at Liverpool. Perhaps uh, in a week-in, week-out second division game, he would have gone for goal. I don't know about being intimidated, but it's been a brilliant 10 minutes for them. Ipswich have taken the game. They've been very, very positive, very confident, and really unsettled Liverpool at the moment. The passing's been better. They've kept the ball. And it's only in the last third that it's really let them down. Well, Jan Mulby was perhaps the least likely of the three who've come back tonight. Jones and Nickel, the others, to be fit. They're still concerned about his knee problem, but really Liverpool feeling that he was needed and they were going to take a gamble on his fitness. He's up there now in support of Jones. So too is Mike Marsh, the number six. Jones again. Saunders. Manaman trying to get in uh, and Walters coming behind him on Saunders' flick. Mulby. Oh, it ran a little unluckily for Stockwell. And Liverpool had the throw. Steve Harkness, who did play league football at Carlisle briefly before Liverpool snapped him up. Now an England youth international. Manaman, Walters and Dazelle recognising that that was the right thing to do in the circumstances good little tip that for, for kids watching the big high cup tie like this a lot of pressure there are times when the best place for the ball is in the stand early on in a game Houghton and the walk <laughs> giving Forrest plenty to do then but he used his uh, reach six foot five inches tall Craig Forrest Stabbed back by Walk, a little too abruptly it seemed, first up, but Forrest had the answer. Came off Harkness. Witten. Gavin Johnson's made a run in from the left of midfield to the far post. Maybe he that was in the thinking for a deep cross then. There he is. One of Ipswich's local products. Still an Ipswich ball. They've won six of their last seven. The only game they didn't win was against Liverpool, of course. Well, so we have to have a result here tonight and of course the same applies in the second part of our double feature West Ham United against Sunderland extensive and extended highlights coming up once this game is finished at Anfield header. Kiwomia maybe tried to play it but it's run on kindly for Gavin Johnson and I think the referee wondered about that Mark Wright with something of a handoff on Gavin Johnson then yeah referee did have a little look Martin but I think perfectly right Mark Wright had just watched him very very well and Gavin Johnson just overran it a little bit Mark Wright just stepped in and tidied it up but that's, that again is what you should do if you're, you've got Ray Houghton on the right side and you're, and you're playing against him if you want to nullify him a bit then you get him running towards his own goal at the moment that's what Gavin Johnson's doing guided on by Witten that point you made about his height and his usefulness in the air on the right hand side 
and how pleased Liverpool are to have Steve Nicol available again Mulby and now Harkness nudged infield by Saunders and the only worry for Linigan there was the sharpness of his turn he might have slipped running was uh, Dazell and here's Thompson Dazell stylishly constructed again by Ipswich Thompson and Palmer well Ipswich brimming with confidence I'll tell you what the type of football that we would associate with a John Lyle side isn't it this is the end of the move the, the shot really doesn't do the move justice all started with a magnificent 40 yard ball from David Linigan to a running Jason Dazelle in behind Rob Jones here's Jones now Houghton Johnson helping out in the centre of midfield at the moment he'll have to go again here Kiwomya outmanoeuvred by Nickel. Palmer trying to press Mulby and Milton was the beneficiary of that Dazelle uh, looking for help from behind Thompson has done a lot of forward running and on that occasion was just a uh, drawing a bit of breath well Steve McManaman was superb in the replay against Bristol Rovers here in the fourth round really turned it round for Liverpool and you can sense the anticipation now from the Liverpool supporters every time he gets possession with a chance to run at the opposition it's an unfortunate thing for the young lad isn't it when you set yourself such high standards the supporters are looking for that every time he gets it there's that tactic again from the goalkeeper looking for Steve Witten to just help the ball on in this right side and Kiwami has got the better of Harkness Nickel had to be nippy again for Liverpool Saunders Stockwell in the way Ipswich every player wanting the ball and giving Liverpool some heartache here it's Stockwell again oh Dazel was actually challenged by Rob Jones enough to put him off and here's McManaman stretching those uh, talented legs again. But prior to that, hats off again to Ipswich Town. I tell you what, Martin, at this time, if you'd swap shirts round and put the Ipswich team in red shirts, you really would think you were watching Liverpool. The way they've slicked the ball about at times has been quite superb. And that move we've just seen typical of it. Here's Jones. raised by Rob Jones free kick to Ipswich right now Marsh could uh, see what was in Ray Houghton's mind as Saunders set off but Ipswich as well as playing some uh, very pleasing football have defended well and do again through walk who's still playing for a proper contract having been really rescued from the scrap heap by Ipswich after he was released by Middlesbrough at the end of last season actually played some games at the start of this season for Ipswich's reserve team without any payment at all just to help out Jones it was Milton who won it back Kiwomia attacking Mark Wright, Dizelle alongside him Witten coming up as well and uh, Johnson on the other side Chris Kiwomia hasn't quite got his angles right yet he'll be disappointed so far Martin he's found himself in about three or four brilliant situations when he's just had to roll a player in and his pass has been very very poor 
And let's have a chance now to look at the quality of Ipswich's play again here, Andy. Yes, yeah, so again, it's Mick Stockwell that gets himself in there. But look at Rob Jones. That's brilliant defender from the young lad to get in and thwart, but possibly would have been a certain goal for him. Jones, who has football in the family, of course, and on Saturday, when Liverpool play Southampton here, his grandfather Bill, who also played for England, played for Liverpool in the 1950 FA Cup final, is actually coming along to watch Rob play at Anfield for the first time in the flesh. It really has been one of the most romantic stories of the season, but Ipswich. Uh, Blessed with a touch of romance tonight themselves. Really coming here to take Liverpool on, but being challenged by Walters, who's trickery, of course, is something they must be concerned about. Mulby. Jones there before Johnson, who's pulled up. He didn't actually make any contact with either Rob Jones or the ball. And... Uh, it's as though his left ankle is troubling him. Came off Witten's head, but only fell well for Liverpool. Walk, though, down to Stockwell. Lidigan, the younger brother of Andy of Arsenal. Harton, Marsh to the right. Mike Marsh is in for Liverpool here. And Craig Forrest has kept it at 0-0. Very well indeed. Yeah, David Linnigan almost pays a penalty for overplaying. Mike Marsh finds himself, tries to drill it near post. The goalkeeper gets his angles right and just gets the finest of touches to it. I was just about to say, Martin, before that, that the one thing that would worry me if I was John Lair would be the fact that his team have had a great 20-minute spell. But the one thing they haven't done is score a goal. Now, when you're in top of a Liverpool like that, you have to score, otherwise you can be punished. Gavin Johnson having treatment before the corner can be taken. It gives us a chance to uh, check up with what's happening down by the dugouts with David Livingston. The question down here, Martin, is uh, will the voice of Graham Souness last the 90 minutes? He's been uh, hitting the high decibel so far. He's a bit happier now after that last attack, attack but he wasn't happy at the start. And uh, several players were told in no uncertain terms to waken up, and one of them was Steve McManaman. So Johnson is OK for the moment, although I suspect he's still feeling that ankle problem. Ipswich will need everyone in full working order as they defend this corner. And another one to come, the ball flying behind off Simon Milton. Who's one of the late entrants to the professional game and has this uh, hunger to succeed because of it. Played part-time football when he was working in the Suffolk area as a paint sprayer. And then here he is trying to spray the ball around, shall we say. Palmer heads it out only as far as Harkness. Here's Walters. Well, the uh, linesman had his flag up. And the Ipswich fans finally made Alf Bucks, the referee, look across. It's about 3,500 here from Suffolk, and they're very happy with the way the game has gone after 25 minutes with just one reservation, that Ipswich, who have made chances, haven't taken one of them yet. I'm just thinking about Graham Souness and, and, and what he would want. I'm sure there are three players in particular I'd love to see on the ball, and that's Ray Houghton, Jan Mulby and Mark Walters on this left side. And what's happened is that Ipswich have managed to keep the ball away from these three from the greater part of this half so far. certainly think Mark Walters has taken up some good positions. They really need to look to him to get the ball and really go at Mick Stockwell. Came off Milton. Now Walters. Oh, and Milton very displeased with the referee who's ruled that 
as he went in to challenge Walters then that the ball flew off Simon Milton a corner is the decision Liverpool have brought Mark Wright forward Mulby lurking on the edge of the area Walters to take it and Forrest was kept down there by Saunders <laughs> Both missed the ball, and there was no one coming in for Liverpool. I can't that, believe Dean Saunders would have got away with that. But a bit of David and Goliath there, wasn't it? David won again. Seven minutes gone. David Linnigan, the captain of Ipswich, looking for Witten again. Dazelle unfairly turning nickel. Here's Jones. Saunders not giving that one up, and by his chasing, he's brought a corner for Liverpool. Once more, they wait for Wright's arrival. And then play it short to Marsh. Helped on by McManaman, but that type of flick, unless it went straight to a teammate, it's always likely to end up where it did, behind the goal for a goal kick. Settled a little bit better now, Liverpool, though. Starting to look to put some passes together. Looked very nervy. I mean, people at home would probably imagine it would be Ipswich would be coming here as a nervous team. Uh, it would, would be that way, and Liverpool would be super confident in playing at home. Nothing like that. Liverpool are the ones, believe you me, Martin, that were under pressure at the beginning of this game tonight. And it looked that way a little bit. They now look to have settled a bit, Liverpool, looking to try and put passes together and start to exert just a fraction more pressure on Ipswich. Well, John Lyle, who was the manager of West Ham twice when they won the Cup in 1980 as the last second division side to collect the trophy. But it is extraordinary in uh, what getting on for 15 years in charge of West Ham. He never had a win here, and Ipswich have never in their history been successful on this ground. Jones. It's Witten's long ball, and Kiwomia recognizing that Wright was there to deal with it before he could make up any ground. Now Johnson. And Nicol plays it back to Grobelar. We've just hit a spell now, though, where Ipswich, understandably perhaps, haven't been able to quite maintain the gusto of their start. And Liverpool giving the first signs, really, of being able to assert themselves a little more in midfield bellowed on from the sidelines by Graham Souness. Walters. And that was Milton who made sure that the uh, central defenders weren't called upon. Witten. Helped from behind by Stockwell. Jones. Well, Dean Saunders recognised quite rightly for his capacity to score goals, but when you watch him play regularly, he really does work the full width of the pitch to take a part in the build-up. Walters getting behind Witten. Play on. Alf 
box was only a few yards away from the incident. No complaints from Liverpool. Mulvey got the ball. Saunders. This time, McManaman going for an earlier cross. Houghton trying to return it. Forrest had come a long way from home. Well, Alf Bush certainly had a great view of this incident as it comes across and Mark Walters takes it down brilliantly in one movement and it's just a little bit but watch this he pokes it away I'll tell you what Ooh. I think Mark Walters' reputation there probably robbed him I think a lot of people think Mark goes looking for penalties I certainly don't think he did in that situation and it may be that his reputation has gone before him there but this is more like the Liverpool we've come to expect passing the ball patient People moving off the ball, good movement all round. Throw from Jones. Here's Saunders. Waters is free on this near side, and Liverpool able to spot that. Mulvey's in trouble now. He really hasn't been able to make an imprint on the game so far. But he was yeah. making an imprint of a different kind here. I think it's just sheer frustration from Jan. See, he just swings a wild leg at it there. But Steve Palmer really has marked him very, very tightly. Could probably count in one hand the amount of touches Jan Mulvey's had. And if you're doing that, then certainly Liverpool won't be as effective. Steve he likes Palmer. To, sorry, Martin. He likes to play with the ball at his feet, Jan Mulvey, and he hasn't had it there today. Palmer, a very talented all-round sportsman. He represented Cambridge University at football, of course, won the three blues, but also played one game of first-class cricket against Lancashire and got the wicket of Graham Fowler, which uh, he's very proud of. That's Witten. Well, it's something we've talked about throughout the first half. And Liverpool, although I'm sure they're aware of the threat, aren't handling it very well. Mulby. Witten working hard again. Well, Steve Witten has uh, made public his gratitude to Ipswich, who have stood by him in a difficult time in his life off the field he's been sentenced to community service because of driving related offences here's Thompson but everybody playing their part for the second division team who uh, very much deserve here to be still level with Liverpool with just over 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Mulby. Well, Stockwell and Saunders were very close to each other then. And the outcome is a free kick to Liverpool. Now, it's a bit unlucky here. You see, they're both off balance there slightly. And I think the legs just get tangled up. Mick Stockwell's very unlucky to concede a free kick there. And a quickly taken one, which leads to another Liverpool corner Stockwell again the defender involved once again Liverpool consider playing the ball short and that's what they've done Forrest way above the rest and Jones anticipated the throw just in time Excellent defending again from him. Here's Nickel. Saunders getting the benefit against... Oh, Dazelle, it flicked off him a second time. Twice the ball. Run badly for Ipswich off Jason Dazelle until it in the end ran behind for a goal kick. So without really playing particularly well, we're seeing more of Liverpool now. Oh, definitely. They're exerting more and more pressure on the match. The one thing, I, 
you can be sure of, Mark. But if Ipswich need to try and find some pressure of their own. I don't think that they will be able to go out, certainly the second half, and hoping to absorb all this pressure. Because you do feel that Liverpool have enough individual talent at their disposal to open up this Ipswich defence at least one or two times more than they would punishment. So it's important for Ipswich that, as an attacking force, they exert some pressure on Liverpool. Well, Milton left the ball then quite deliberately, but there wasn't a great reaction around him. Liverpool will attack the cop, of course, in the second half. And their help, their supporters there, of course, is now in the realms of legend. And Liverpool, Graham Souness believes, needing all the help that they can get at this stage of what's been a very strange season for them. Mulvey caught out by Palmer, who's certainly winning that battle. Wormia, Dazelle, too tight. Halton. Here's McManaman. Saunders in the centre. Oh, and Halton. Well, with uh, two passes then, Ipswich were opened up. Ray Houghton roaring in, couldn't round it off. Oh, he makes a great run. It's that run in, in, outside to inside from the right position. And he's got better quality than that, Ray Houghton, hasn't he? I think he knows he should have done better, doesn't he? Of course, he started his uh, professional career at West Ham, where the manager who in the end let him go was John Lyle. <laughs> but it wasn't quite as simple as that. Ray was allowed to go and find another club on the proviso that if he didn't get one, West Ham would take him back. There just wasn't room for him in the first team in those days. I think there would be a few queuing up for him these days, though, wouldn't there? Yes. <laughs> but he has been slightly a late developer. Witten. This is Johnson, but Grobelar is there. Wants somebody to throw it to. A bit disappointed that there's no one initially available. Again, another very appropriate piece of football from Rob Jones. Mulby, who's hardly been able to break into a trot. Not uh, a great runner around the pitch when he's fully fit. But he can pass the ball and uh, let the ball do the work. And the player charged with the responsibility of stopping that is Steve Palmer. But on that occasion, Mulby found the range. How? Mulby again. Palmer pressing again. Liverpool keep the ball again. Nickel. Ipswich back off. Nickel goes on unabashed. Now, right. They want width here. Marsh. Just plopping it over the top of Thompson for McManaman came off Milton and safely away by Palmer but Ipswich having to concentrate totally on defending at the moment Mulby who's had his best spell of the match over the last couple of minutes I think John Lyle will be looking at his watch very anxiously I think he'll be very keen to get his team in at half-time and just settle them down and rearrange things. Would have been delighted with the first 20 minutes. Now we're seeing what we've seen many, many times at Anfield. A team right on the rack at the moment. Palmer. Liverpool were drawn at Crewe in the third round. No alarms there. A hat-trick on a rare appearance this season from John Barnes. Difficult at Bristol Rovers away again. In the fourth round, needed the replay. Away again to Ipswich, first of all, of course, in round five. Even though it's Aston Villa, they'll be pleased to play at home in the next round if they get through. Walk. Well, Whitten was playing then on the inexperience of Steve Harkness. Yeah, but what a wonderful ball from John Watt. 
It's shown that he may be well over 30, John Watt, but he can still pick out 40-yard passes. No doubt about a free kick. Bit surprised about the booking, though. Well, David Burrows, who's out of the side, having collected, I think, nine yellow cards this season. And his deputy also has the same problem. It's Thompson to take the free kick. Very nearly got to Dazel. Mark Wright climbed well in the nick of time. Mulby. feel if Mulby can assert himself Liverpool will find the tools to finish the job been one or two uh, more classy balls from the Danish international Mark Walters and those ahead of Jan Mulby will certainly appreciate that He's been out for the last four games with this knee problem, which has given uh, Jamie Redknapp an opportunity. But Ipswich very eager in the middle of the field themselves. Milton with Kiwamia. This is very well played because Kiwamia will keep the ball in. And Milton was hoping that they might keep it going. A little private game then between the two of them. He was making a run into the middle. Kiwamia's cross was blocked behind for the corner. But that's what they need to do, Martin. They've got to exert some pressure of their own. Two minutes to go to half-time. The key man here, David Linnigan waiting by the near post, and possibly... Come on! Come on, Steve Whitten on the other side of the goal. Here's Whitten, but Grobelaar beat him to it very well. When a goalkeeper comes like that, he has to make the ball his, and Grobelaar did just that. Johnson, Marsh on the edge of his own area, and no one, because of the risk of going offside, could have run into the area then, from Ipswich's point of view. Ipswich's job tonight really does demand 100% concentration for the whole 90 minutes or 120, whatever it's going to be. Because when you look around this Liverpool side, they have enough individual talent, enough players, that in just one spark can open up their team. This is Johnson. It's a corner, but before that, Mark Bucks. Just wanting to make sure that Kiwamia was OK. <laughs> Lenigan. Well, they can scarcely uh, fail to miss him. Liverpool, he's the biggest man in there. But at the moment, Ipswich rather using him as a decoy. And certainly, Liverpool will know about John Walk as well who at this stage in the first game hit the crossbar at Portman Road right on half-time. Milton. Walters. We move into stoppage time. He is the furthest forward for Liverpool. He's got support in the centre now from Saunders. McManaman's up as well. And moments after having a corner of their own, Ipswich have to defend one. Marsh. Houghton. Walters can whip it back in again. was just long enough for Liverpool. A minute of stoppage time played. And Ray Houghton drilled it low inside.
inside the near post of Craig Forrest. Well, I said earlier on that he's got better quality than he showed. And here it is. Not in his best foot by any means, but there's only the smallest of gaps there. And it's a brilliant finish. Give him too much time. He's got time to set it up and drill it in the near post. What a blow that is for Ipswich. Well, Ipswich came fast out of the traps here tonight and imposed themselves on this replay quicker than Liverpool did. But there are a few better teams anywhere at pacing the job than Liverpool FC. And the half ending really on a high note. Ray Houghton, who's had such a consistent season for Liverpool, and he's served Graham Souness so well again. Ipswich will feel a little hard done by it. Liverpool certainly got better as the half wore on, and they've crowned it by taking the lead right on the half-time whistle. At Anfield, at half-time, it's Liverpool 1, Ipswich Town 0. Welcome back, 1-0 Liverpool at half-time. That Carlsberg Man of the Match telephone number, 0898. 500 125 0898 500 125 Matt Matt Lorenzo will give you the outcome Sky Soccer Weekend this coming Friday Ron just enough time I mean a perfect time to strike well exactly I mean it couldn't have been any later and uh, but you did sense although just prior to that uh, Ipswich had had a couple of corners but you just just did sense that Liverpool was starting to grow and I always felt a goal was coming at any given time around about that time you and I both shouted penalty as Steve Whitten challenged Mark Walters let's put it like that not sure whether he got a piece of the ball at all yes I think for me I think this was a penalty Walters drags it down now Steve Whitten is actually a forward player being asked there to do a defensive job a marking job he's lunged he's made to be fair to Steve Whitten he's made an attempt for the ball but he has in fact uh, he has in fact caught Walters and, and brought him to ground yeah and, I mean uh, attempt or not if you yeah, catch him yeah, yeah, yeah that would be penalty, right isn't it? yeah um, I think, I think most referees would have given that, particularly in view of it was in fairly much an open space. It wasn't as if it was in a congested area and the referee may not have had a good view of it. Um, and your gut feeling is when it first happens, OK, we've seen the action replay, but your gut feeling was when it first happened it was a penalty. And uh, I think, I think uh, Liverpool should have had a penalty there. He'll yeah. take a lot of credit, or should do, for the goal, Mark Walters. Yes, he's probably been the main threat. Um, there he lofts it in following the corner. It's just half cleared out to Houghton, who has had a very, by his standards, a very quiet game. And he's hit it low. I'm not sure that he didn't get a little deflection. He's hit it low with his left foot. And it's unusual to beat the keeper with a left footed shot at the near post with that. But I'm not so sure when we saw it from behind the goal that it may have, took, it may have taken a slight deflection. Mm. The keeper may just have been a little bit unsighted as well. There it is. It's defected out. Now, you'd have bet money if he's going to shoot with his left foot now, he'd be looking for the far post. I think he was. Because the keeper's got a lot of cover. <laughs> Keeper's, keeper's got the uh, near post covered fairly well, and he must have seen it late, Forrest. I think Forrest will feel he should have saved that. When I say Walters takes credit for the goal, I don't just mean for that cross, but he stormed into Ipswich territory right on half-time to win that corner. Well, that's he? right. I mean, Ipswich were actually attacking. They'd had a corner, um, which has got partially cleared. Um, Walters picked the ball up just outside his own half and ran, just ran positively. At the, he ran straight down the flank, and that sometimes is the value of having a quick player in a wide position. He's carried it the length of the field, and in the end, they've had to defend it, Ipswich, and conceded the corner from which Ipswich have ultimately, if so, from which Liverpool have ultimately scored. And they'll be particularly disappointed, Ipswich, because they started well and looked the most dangerous. They finished well, mm. and Liverpool had the best spell in the middle. Yeah, it seems strange. Um, they were strong in midfield. They tightened down very well on Liverpool. Um, as, we, as they were saying in commentary position, that uh, Palmer was going to do a man-to-man -man job on uh, Jan Mulby, which he appeared to do very, very well. And I don't know how little things trigger games. Now, Johnson got injured, and Johnson had been quite a key figure, and he had a knock, and that just, the little spell where he, where he took a bit of time to get back into the game, appeared to give Liverpool a chance to settle down. And after that, all right, the brief flurry before half-time, the two corners for Ipswich, but after that, I felt Liverpool were always growing and growing and mm. building. I mean, there was the good situation when, when Mars should have scored. I mean, they worked, it worked him in in the wide position on the right-hand side, and... You know, Forrest can take good credit. He stood up and touched it around the post, but there was always a threat. And funnily enough, most of the threat has come, I feel, through Walters. When he's had the ball, particularly when Steve Witten's been asked to do a defending job, when Steve Witten, he's, he's a natural front runner. When he's worked back as the sort of wide man in the midfield, yes. he's often been 1v1 against Walters, yes. and he always looks like we've seen with the, the penalty situation. And indeed, probably, probably Stockwell may have got closer to Walters 
who crossed the original ball for uh, Houghton to score. The run. Let's just have another look at the penalty incident. The neutrals will be screaming, no, they get enough of them. <laughs> but I think like you it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it's turning. Steve Whitten's on balance there and he's just lunged. I mean, a natural defender would possibly have been a little bit more patient. He may not have been, he may have thrown himself in anyway, but I feel that Steve isn't, isn't the greatest defender in his own penalty box. I mean, he, he's created a fair few chances for Ipswich uh, by his attacking play, particularly his ability in the air, but defensively he can't shift his feet quick enough against a, a tricky winger. Mm. West Ham and Sunderland, highlights from Upton Park, extended highlights coming up later in this programme. Our live match, Liverpool against Ipswich, it's 1-0 to Liverpool at the moment. We'll be back with the second half very shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back. Remember, highlights from Upton Park coming up, West Ham and Sunderland. Our live match comes from Anfield, Liverpool against Ipswich, 1-0 to Liverpool at half-time. Commentators Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thank you, Richard. We've had drama at half-time down below with the news that referee Alf, Alf Buksch has strained a groin muscle and the senior linesman Ken Leach will take over for the second half. It's not the first time it's happened to him. A couple of years ago in an important League Cup tie between Nottingham Forest and Tottenham he took over. I was at that game and uh, I remember he did a particularly good job. Jerry Carroll the fourth official is now the third official. All that hard on the heels of Ray Houghton's goal, which Ipswich have had to absorb down in their dressing room and try to come up with a way to wipe out now as Liverpool set off facing the cop in the second half. Yeah, I would love to have been in Nipswich dressing room at half-time just to see John Lyle at work. That's when a manager really has to earn his corn, when his team have lost a goal here at Anfield, an injury time in the first half of a cup tie. And I've had to get the, his team's heads up off their chest, because I'm sure there was a few chins down there, and get them to go out and peg this goal back if they possibly can. Saunders. Liverpool, on the other hand, having made this very shaky start to the game will want to continue where they left off it really was quite an odd sort of first half with uh, Ipswich doing the second division proud in the early stages and Liverpool a little uncertain at times looking a little lethargic but Ipswich must feel that they're not just taking on the uh, 11 players in red out there they're taking on the history books as well the poor record of past Ipswich sides here. Some of them crammed full of international players as well in the uh, times of Bobby Robson when they were rivaling with uh, Liverpool for the league title. But they didn't manage a victory. It's also been pointed out around Merseyside over the past couple of days that Liverpool haven't been beaten at home in an FA Cup replay since 1969. Leicester City were the team to do it then. It's a famous match because Roger Hunt, the hero of the day, was substituted for the first time and threw his shirt at Bill Shankly. McManaman. I bet you that was the only time he threw his shirt at Bill Shankly. <laughs> That's why it made the headlines. <laughs> I don't think anybody will be uh, doing the same in Graham Souness's direction tonight. Well, maybe. You never know. It is a match of passion and emotion. But the happier emotions are with Liverpool at the moment and their supporters. Walters. Saunders was just uh, feeling John walk <laughs> and actually uh, in the end holding his shirt Thompson now to sell for Milton who was full of good ideas in the first half it was a bit unfortunate for him that uh, the ball actually deflected off his head to Ray Houghton for the goal I'm sure all of you at home have been analyzing the replays 
through the half-time interval of how Ray Houghton's shot got in. And uh, certainly the feeling up on the gantry here was that Craig Forrest, no goalkeeper, likes to be beaten at the near post, but there was uh, a fair case for claiming he was unsighted. And it was hit with real precision by this chap here, Ray Houghton. And he's uh, in the clear again. Saunders coming to the near post, so was McManaman. Forrest using the ball quickly and... Well, Steve Nick will tell you he meant to do that. Now, Saunders can feel that Liverpool are a little more relaxed now. Here's Mulby. Trying to pull a string or two. But all Walters can do is uh, play the ball towards the touchline where none of his teammates were. Andy? I suppose if some, if you're looking for some good out the goal for Ipswich, it, was, it did look as if they were getting pushed further and further back, Martin, in the first half. And there might have been a tendency for the players, had they gone in at 0-0, to have adopted the same tactics second half and maybe lost the game 1-0 in the 87th minute or something. They now at least know that they have to come forward looking for a goal. And that at least is one positive thing they have. Liverpool, this uh, League of Nations club at the moment, I think eight different countries represented in their 13 players tonight and uh, the two substitutes Ronnie Rosenthal from Israel and Istvan Kozma from Hungary, hoping to make his home debut. His first appearance uh, in Liverpool colours was at Ipswich as a substitute and he started at Norwich on Saturday. Now Marsh. What a great opportunity it has been in adversity for the youth of Liverpool. But Marsh beaten by the determination again of Simon Milton. That's a fine ball on Johnson. Always aware that Neil Thompson will charge on ahead of him. But he underhit his attempt to find him. Jones. Linigan's got to deal with this, and he does it the safest way possible. McManaman. And of course, what Ipswich mustn't do is lose an early goal. just uh, gone off the pitch to have a word with the dugout back on again now but not upfield for the corner unusually and he's still back on the halfway line as Liverpool now have to throw Marsh well there was no way Saunders could reach that Cop trying to uh, take a claim for a penalty for him and now Kiwomia fouled by Nicol and yeah, the replacement referee has a decision to make here I don't really think he has and he's made the right one like both players go, go off the pitch into that soft bit of turf there that the linesman runs along and just completely lose a footing but it would have been interesting if Chris Kiwomia had managed to stay on his feet you don't think Steve Nicol put his right arm out intentionally as he fell then well, you obviously don't. <laughs> <laughs> I might beg to differ, but he's very clever at it. And uh, if it was a foul, it was very professionally done. Here's Walters. Harkness. 
Houghton delightfully delivered for Mulby. He in turn for Walters, but uh, he was trying to wave him forward. And in the end, he had to wave an arm of apology. Mark Walters was in a position where he could have got the ball to feet. It's too easy for Jan Mulby. <laughs> He'll roll it to someone's feet, Martin. Don't be silly. <laughs> he is blessed with great confidence, not to say at times a touch of arrogance in his own ability. And why not the way he can uh, move the ball around the football pitch? But not moving at the moment is Steve Harkness, Phil Borsma on the scene. Graham Sunis is in trouble here with the other linesman, John Biddle, for coaching or passing on a message of a coaching nature to Rob Jones and it needs the Merseyside constabulary to get the Liverpool manager back in its proper place shades of Glasgow <laughs> no 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 he, he was never allowed to sit in the touchline when he was in Glasgow man <laughs> well, I've got quite a long memory you have to have to remember when Graham was on the bench <laughs> with Rangers Then again, heads it forward for Ipswich. Here's Mulby. Nicol went outside him, but again, Mulby spurned the simple pass. But Dazelle with a pass of Mulby dimensions to Kiwamia. Johnson's cross. Here's Milton, great header out by Mark Wright. Wonderful piece of defending them. Ipswich certainly had numbers attacking the ball in the centre. They are created through Jason Dazelle's magnificent cross-field ball to Chris Kawamia. But what a defensive header from Mark Wright. Here's Dazelle. Oh, and uh, Milton had darted in for a shorter pass. Dazelle feeling that it's time to try and get a shot away. But earlier they came closer. Yeah, he did hook it well into the box. That's the thing, is it Jason Dozell who managed to make up ground at the back post and nod it back across. But watch Mark right there. That's great defending. Palmer. Witten. Here's Walk. We're 11 minutes into the second half. Liverpool lead Ipswich by a goal to nil. Coming in stoppage time at the end of the first half. And in an ever-changing season, the consistent thread Ray Houghton supplied the goal. A trip on Harkness by Dazell. Jones. Kuomia, time to control. Palmer, but... Mike Marsh was in very quickly indeed. Saunders likewise, but Walk just able to play the ball away for Ipswich. Milton again, who really has given a display of non-stop endeavour. Not everything he's tried has come off. But he really is the heartbeat in midfield for Ipswich at the moment. It's a great run he's made, and it's, I always feel such a pity and frustration when somebody makes a run like that, gets in a great position and delivers a ball over the crossbar into the the dead part of the pitch. I mean, people like Simon Mott has made a great run. All he has to do is just curl his foot round it, put it into that six-yard area and let his strikers get in after it. Dean Saunders lifting a boot into the face of John Walk. Oh, 
given the uh, gossip that always leads up to this type of tie. I think Liverpool felt that John Walk might not uh, last the distance. Word of his injury had reached Anfield. He's still going strong. So too are Ipswich, but they're a goal down. They reached this stage by getting the better of Hartlepool after a home draw. They went away up in the northeast by two goals to nil in the third round. Saw off Bournemouth. 3-0 at home in round four. Mulvey. Wanting some movement. Houghton again supplying it. And Saunders. Marsh has the shot. The linesman is flagging. The cop were crying for handball as the shot was blocked, but the decision given here was offside. I think quite right as well. It's, it's Ray Houghton actually, who just in the left here picture, who crept into the offside position, but noticeable and probably in a positive thing from Liverpool that Jan Moby is beginning to get more and more of the ball. They're getting the ball to him on a more regular basis. Witten. John Walk has missed very little in the middle of it, which is defence. Wright's there again. One thing, uh, if we were to get to a penalty shootout tonight, it wouldn't necessarily phase Ipswich too much. They've had two already this season in the uh, Zenith competition. They knocked out Luton on penalties back in the autumn, but went out at Stamford Bridge to Chelsea by the same route. Karomia offside. and then that Marsh again Mark Walters left back on his heels really wanting the ball to uh, his feet to try and take on Ipswich and show off his repertoire David Linnigan is down in distress now Paul Goddard who uh, played for England once, way back in 1982, scored a goal on his only international appearance. Remembered from his time with Queen's Park Rangers and West Ham and Newcastle. Good time at Derby as well. And he, like John Lyle, will be perhaps heading for the television once this one is over to see how their old club West Ham have got on against Sunderland, remember that's coming up. Extended highlights, West Ham against Sunderland, straight after we finish tonight at Anfield. Well, David Livingston has been assessing the mood of Graham Souness down on the bench. David, what's been going on down there? Well, first of all, Martin, with Liverpool, Istvan Cosma was warming up for some five minutes, and the reason was that uh, they were worried about uh, an injury to Steve Harkness. Uh, that's why Graham Souness was out and got himself into trouble. He was trying to establish through Rob Jones what was wrong with Harkness. It seems the, the, the danger has uh, disappeared. But, of course, now the attention has switched to uh, Ipswich. It looks as if they're going to bring on Paul Goddard. What they won't want to happen is losing their captain, an inspirational figure. But there's a heavy limp for Linigan at the moment. Two number twos up against each other all the time. The way the uh, strategy is sorted out here. Marsh. Will be releasing the ball quickly, hoping to find Houghton over the top. 
Jones. And Milton is there again. Ben Johnson. Offside. There's clearly an area on that far side that Liverpool are trying to exploit to bring the best out of Mark Walters. They haven't quite been able to do that. And Saunders. Linnigan. It's another offside. That's close, that one, Martin, I tell you. Rob Jones in this side is a mighty relief man. He was just a couple of yards deeper than his other defenders. Here's Dazel. Liverpool still leading. But Ipswich looking to alter that. So Ipswich will make their change. And it's a tactical move with Steve Palmer, the anchor man in midfield going off it's a brave decision by John Lyle because Linnigan is limping Johnson is limping but he wants them still out there and he wants Paul Goddard to bring his craft in the cause of Ipswich now and he's always been a most thoughtful attacker walk Kiwami are not thinking that he was standing. That's lazy, Martin. Lazy play from Chris Kawami really cost him a, a great situation. Slow and get him back. What Ipswich will do now, and certainly they have done now, is put Jason Dazelle back into that midfield area. But what a handy player to be able to put on if you're looking for a goal in a match, Paul Goddard. The tremendous goal scoring record. Jason Dazelle does prefer playing from midfield. I said in uh, the commentary on the first game that at Ipswich they liken him to Trevor Brooking. In movement and also in the fact that he might be now at an age in uh, his mid-twenties to make a major impact on the game. Trevor Brooking wasn't even sure of a place in the uh, West Ham starting lineup in his early twenties. Linnigan, now Kiwamia, Ipswich want to support him, and they're doing that with Johnson through the centre, Goddard to the left, Whitten coming in on the far side, and well Goddard too anxious to make an early incision, what really he is such a good technical player that was quite a surprise that he wasted that. I don't think any fault of his own. I'm sure that Paul Gunnar just seemed to lose, lose his standing foot as he went to put the ball across the goal. But what a chance that was for Ipswich to really test the Liverpool defence there. And what a reminder it was for Liverpool that they're not in the quarterfinals yet. But if there's an area for me, looking at the second half, that they, they can exploit, it is this near side of the pitch. Ray Houghton's got a tremendous appetite to be involved in the game, Martin, even when the ball's way over on the far side, and tends to go in in those diagonal runs that I mentioned in the first half. When he does that, he does leave a huge hole on this side, and if Ipswich can transfer the ball and get it quickly, they really could get some joy down here. We're halfway through the second half. It's still Liverpool 1, Ipswich 0. But as dummy, Milton, he can shoot. But like so much of the work of Ipswich tonight, it's lack the finale. This is right out the West Ham textbook. Step over from Goddard. The unfortunate thing for Simon Milton. That was there to be hit with his left foot. Not his favourite foot, and it was a difficult shot to take on his right. Well, he scored the winning goal at Tranmere on the Friday not too far away from here he's got seven from midfield this season which is a very healthy return and uh, one thing about him he won't be disheartened by uh, the disappointment then 
he'll continue to make those runs to try and get in behind Liverpool once more. Thompson with the throw. Ipswich really trying to grasp the nettle here. Well, special supporters of Liverpool tonight, guests of their care in the community programme, which is run here by a former Liverpool favourite, Brian Hall. It is good to see football doing so much for those in special need. I'm sure those particular supporters will have a night to remember this evening. Dazelle, Linegan, Thompson, trying to run past Houghton. He's done that. Well, again, it was a pretty narrow margin. Thompson hitting, he hoped towards goal, in the end it flashed across in front of his colleagues. Some brilliant positive run that he sets out on Neil Thompson. And if you look, in Martin, Paul Gardner gets a toe to this, takes it through and slots it in. Walk. Ipswich showing signs of a second wind and their supporters have also got plenty of air in their lungs and they're matching the cop at the moment oh they've come up here to enjoy themselves and they see their team put up a tremendous show battling really hard to stay in this fa cup well dean saunders graham soonis call for uh, everyone to fight for the cause tonight and there can be no complaints about the commitment of a player who spills blood like that <laughs> I think when managers say that I want you to spill blood for me today <laughs> I don't think that's quite what they mean <laughs> it's quite useful when you get in the dressing room afterwards to uh, from a player's point of view to point out as long as it's not too serious and I'm not sure that this is making a change, Istvan Kozma, the Hungarian, who had two and a half years in Scotland with Dunfermline, and Ronnie Rosenthal are out of the dugout again. As the Welshman is assessed by Phil Borsmer as to whether there might be a stitch or two needed there. It's an interesting one for the referee, Mark. I know that they don't usually like players these days to be running about the pitch if they've got blood running down their face or anything like that. And they certainly don't like players carrying sponges and things like that that get clogged up with blood for obvious reasons. There was an incident in the Rangers game last night when Nigel Spackman had to go off the pitch. Mulvey takes the free kick. Right, got to it, hesitation, he's caused it. And in the end, he was very nearly there to take advantage of it. Bravely claimed by Forrest in the end. They just froze there for a minute, the Ipswich defenders. All left the ball to one another. And Thompson didn't leave it to Houghton down here. Here he is again. Johnson with a chance to cross it. Witten coming in from deep. Dazell. Here's Stockwell. Liverpool's lead looking a little precarious. Dazell trying to... Uh, Stretch and swing that right leg to pull the ball across the face of the goal. I mean, you should watch this as this comes in. Matt Wright causes a confusion. But like four interest defenders just all leaving at each other. Fortunately, Craig Ford is very alert and just scoops up the danger. There was that uh, robust figure, Neil Thompson, who actually reacted quickly. Or quicker than the others, anyway. <laughs> We weren't really reacting at all. Wiseman's flagging. Lenningen wasn't aware of that. And my word, he got to the ball, but <laughs> with the full bulk flattened Steve McManaman. Brilliant centre half said of that, though, Martin. If you were to say centre half, that's what when the ball's in the air and they've got a centre forward in front of you, that's what I want you to do. That was a classic example of going and claiming the ball. It's an imprint of uh, McManaman's nose 
down in the turf there, I think. This is Goddard for Ipswich. Witten. Mark Walters helping Steve Harkness. He likes to do his work in the other half. Harkness again. Saunders looking to bend his run through the centre to make sure he didn't go offside. Steve Hartness is really struggling, Martin. He's gone, he's gone down again. I think the referee's going over to have a look at him. He does seem to be toiling to stay in the game. As he tried to play that long ball, he really did pull up in tremendous pain. But when you're in his position and you've got a first-team shirt on your back, you don't go off the pitch too willingly. soon to be back from suspension to reclaim that shirt Milton there again but Harkness fit enough to dispossess him Forrest having to come out of his area and putting it on to the roof of the Kenlin Road stand behind which the building of the new edifice on the far side is well underway they're building up behind the present stand not inconveniencing the present structure of the ground at all. Clever piece of architecture and uh, engineering. Can Ipswich engineer an equaliser though? They've got 15 minutes left. Ipswich have certainly shown that they've got the ingenuity. What they haven't been able to provide is the final thrust. I think that's right, but what they do know is if they do just get one more chance, somebody just might pop one in for them. Saunders. Milton. Oh, and Grebola was worried. The ball was going over his hands, and it's ended up here. Well, if this is a save, Mark, that's an unbelievable one from Bruce Grobola. Just touches his fingertips. What a great stretch. There was hardly any movement on the path of the ball, but a corner it is that's uh, been given. Thompson to take it. Grobola hasn't got there. Got out, but the whistle was gone. He does take some chances, Bruce, doesn't he? I mean, he's brave because he wants to go in there. Look at that, coming in amongst all those bodies. I'm not so sure there's a free kick involved there, Martin, but he comes in amongst a lot of bodies and he gets the benefit there. Just another pat on the back for Simon Milton, who uh, had the shot that brought about the corner, and uh, he was winning the ball back again to earn this free kick. He's everywhere. Oh, and that's Giselle. They're still very much in the show here, which you're seeing live on Sky Sports. Very much in the show. Jason Dudell keeps in there. And I, I'm sure he'll feel he might have hit the target with that header. But he... Right. Only Saunders through the centre. Marsh. Saunders Witten squeezing it forward to Goddard and Dazelle the rights misheader for once one header for once mistimed Kiwamia no foul the man in the middle the referee Ken Leach who started the game as a linesman and has kept control tidily in the second half Replacing the injured Alf Buksch. Johnson. Kiwamia given a shout to turn by his teammates. Whether he could hear it in this din, I don't know, but Turney did. And Ipswich perhaps in danger of overcommitting. But Manaman 
Linigan's come across, Walters is through the centre, Saunders is there as well, Marsh making ground for midfield, oh and Walters can go on, hits Forrest, help from Milton again, as the ball bounced off the goalkeeper. That's always going to be the danger, Nipswich just have to accept that they might lose another goal, searching for this equaliser. Jones. McManaman gets away from Thompson, but can't catch up the ball. a game it took a while to take off but it's certainly laughed in the distance Marsh Saunders Forrest started to come has gone back now Jones is up there in the central striking position at the moment Saunders dallying the cop wanting a more positive response Marsh sensibly played Here's Walters. The second goal now. And, uh, well, the sixth round very much will be in Liverpool's sights. Walk has other ideas. Nickel wasn't lulled into any sense of full security then, just because Liverpool had the ball for a moment or two in the Ipswich half. Jones and Gavin Johnson who's only a year older than Rob Jones has done his best in this uh, duel between the two starlets and Johnson really hasn't been fully fit either been carrying that uh, left ankle for much of the match yeah we're at the stage now Martin where they've really got to gamble at switch ten minutes to go one down at Anfield no point in playing it safe and just ending up getting beat 1-0. They're as well taking a chance, going for the throw, trying to get the equaliser. And if they lose another one, then they've had a go, haven't they? Stockwell certainly having a go here. Goddard. Liverpool anticipated that easily. But so in turn for Ipswich did walk. Five ahead of him wearing blue shirts. Witten driving the cross. Johnson! Gavin Johnson with a thunderbolt of a header. A glorious goal for Ipswich. Grobelaar had absolutely no chance. It ripped into the top of the net. Well, they said John Ward might not last the game, but he starts to move. This is a magnificent cross from Steve Wynn. And a brilliant header from Gavin Johnston. That's unstoppable. And I don't think there's anyone in this ground that can say they haven't deserved it. Watch it again as it comes over. There's Johnson at the back post. Misses everyone. Take that one out. Great finish. Gavin Johnson is a shy, almost uh, disarmingly modest character. But he is thrilled now, as all the Ipswich fans are. It's time for Ronnie Rosenthal, who is actually waiting to come on at 1-0. He arrives at 1-1. minutes to go and is it going to be extra time Liverpool who have spent a lot of this season expertly papering over cracks that have developed largely through injuries well is this going to be the night when there isn't enough paper to go round Dazelle but it was a move of really high calibre. Walks past to Witten, across it, tempted Grobelar, but was too good for him. He knew he couldn't go for it. He was trying to get back into position. But Gavin Johnson connected so sweetly. And uh, the net was bulging. Ipswich were celebrating. And this cup tie now is... Well, threatening the favourites, to say the least. Watch this for a cross, Martin. Look at the way Steve Witten curls the ball away from the goalkeeper. That would have been easy to miss. I'm telling you something, Gavin Johnson didn't have a lot of target team, Matt. There was a lot of bodies on that goal line. 
but he found the space magnificently. Rosenthal, there was a lot of pushing and shoving there, most of it from the Israeli international. So you join Leo, won't be happy to see that man come on, you know. How many times has Ronnie Rosenthal come on as a substitute for Liverpool and turned the game on its head? Well, when he first arrived at Anfield, of course, uh, almost two years ago, he helped them get the championship with uh, a flurry of fine goals. Well, they need a goal from him now. Ipswich Town, who are uh, sitting proudly in second place in the second division and have so much to look forward to over the rest of the season. But they uh, might have, alongside that league priority, a quarter-final place in the FA Cup. Still a lot to do, but they're level with Liverpool at last, having trailed since stoppage time at the end of the first half. What they can't afford to do, though, Mark, is think that they've achieved it, that they've got there, they've got the goal. If they dare relax for a minute, then as we've said many times tonight, Liverpool, Liverpool have the individual ability in the side to make you pay for any slackness. Here's McManaman, Rosenthal, Walk didn't get there. Stockwell did, and he's hurt himself with some heroic tackling there. That's exactly what I mean, but if you just go to sleep for a minute, and they just give him enough room, Ronnie Rosenthal, as he cuts inside John Watt, but watch this for a covering tackle. He knew he was gambling Mick Stockwell, because there was two other players, the other side of him completely unmarked. But he did what he had to do, he won the ball. Well, John Walk will be relieved because he could have given away a penalty then. Rosenthal, to his credit, wasn't looking for it. He wanted to go on for the goal, but Stockwell stood firm. Five minutes to go in the 90 minutes. 1-1. One, one. Right! Well, he had a goal disallowed at Portman Road from a very similar position. Well, as it comes in, Ipswich really are very slack here, Martin. They can't afford to be. Not with someone like Matt Ray. They're looking after a climb just tries to drop it in the far corner and that can only be inches wide which way is this cup tie going to turn Liverpool have come alive again as you would expect them to do Johnson tomorrow's papers and make history as well Dizel and Grobola <laughs> well, just a semblance of a chance that after he dummied them that Steve Whitten who is a leggy player might have just got to the ball Liverpool you just won that with David Linnigan who uh, was well beaten by Wright's jump in that header a moment ago and has lost some of the spring with his injury and there's Wright making sure there was no spring from Goddard either no chance Martin David Linnigan ain't going off this pitch that's a certainty he's out there he's skipper he's staying on Dazal. <laughs> Ipswich have found it quite hard going since they equalised. 
almost as if the emotion of the equaliser has drained a little bit of their strength. They fought so hard to get it. And they're now hoping that they'll have another 30 minutes to play. Jones. I'll tell you what they're hoping, Martin. They're hoping they can nick one in the last minute and they can go home very happy. Here's right. Free kick to Liverpool. The club that has made a reputation for many things over the last 25 years for success. And part of that success has been the ability to get goals in the closing stages when they're faced by difficulties. They got one in the closing stages here of the first half. And now we're in the final minute of the second with extra time looming, but before that, a free kick to Liverpool. I mean, I quite fancy another half an hour of this. I don't know about you, Martin, but it's been brilliant entertainment. Absolutely right, and... There are some bumps and bruises, wear and tear, are going to be uh, taken into the extra 30 minutes, but let's not prejudge it. This is Liverpool facing the cop. Mulby. That came off Dazelle. Back from Rosenthal, and uh, that may well mean extra time. I think we might be in line for a couple of minutes of injury time as well. There's been one or two times in the second half when trainers have been on. Still time for this game to be won. Right. Ken Leach, the replacement referee, is certainly having an, an eventful evening. And uh, his next blast on the whistle, perhaps, will mean an extra half, half an hour's work for all concerned. Right. Saunders coming for this, but beaten to it by Goddard. Liverpool's throw. 75 seconds of time added on. Nickel. Thompson. Not quite the angle on it. Grubla not settling for the game. Uh, having that extra half an hour. But uh, Nickel might be. We all look at the referee again. The second half has now run 47 minutes. The free kick to Ipswich. Johnson. Witten has always been the outlet right from the start. But in keeping the ball in, he's lost out to Harkness. Now Houghton, Rosenthal wrong-footed, Houghton again. Saunders. Now Nickel Ipswich reforming in terms of their defending to try and stop Liverpool doing what they are trying very nearly were able to achieve then. Dazell, Lidigan. <laughs> Well, it was in Witten's direction again. What's funny there is, well, Jason Dutzel looks at Andy Lennigan as if to say, what are you doing? Pass the ball. Andy Lennigan looks at him and says, I'm a defender, I'm getting rid of it. There ain't much time to go. And who would argue with him? 48 minutes in the second half now. And remember, it was in stoppage time Ray Houghton scored Liverpool's goal. 
but a quite breathtaking equaliser for Ipswich with Walk and Witten serving it up and Gavin Johnson burying the header Gavin Johnson who's on the ball here Thompson with a long throw Bazell trying to take up a position to reach it Witten's come in as well Goddard it was fleeting and Liverpool survived it the referee has another look at the watch but doesn't blow the whistle this is Houghton now Rosenthal Mulvey lets it run Saunders Johnson, two through the middle for Ipswich. And Johnson stopped his toe. Now McManaman. The last launching raid from Liverpool. Linnigan hasn't cleared it. Rob Jones! Well, so much has gone for him this season. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, Martin. Gavin Johnson scored the equaliser. And I'm not joking, he gets in a magnificent block here. This is a corner. As Rob Jones brings it down, Johnson gets it. It clips him on the boot and it just drifts wide. A magnificent block from Gavin Johnson. And it should have been a corner. It is extra time. Liverpool 1, Ipswich Town 1. We'll take a short break and be back for the whole of extra time live on Sky Sports. as well but over the next half an hour we'll see whether they can stay in the FA Cup we have to have a result I'm sure you're well aware of that even if it goes to penalties you just look for signs don't you to see who might be tired or you got the extra time it was noticeable when they had the little break every one of the Ipswich players practically flat on their back resting their legs whereas the Liverpool lads whether it was this little psychological twist from Green Sooners made every player just stand up when he was talking to them Here's Walk, who's listed by John Lyle to be one of the five penalty takers for Ipswich if it gets that far. Along with Steve Witten, Neil Thompson, Jason Dazelle and Simon Milton. Well, I just hope for one that it doesn't go that far. I know it's, it makes great television at times, Mark, but I'm a great lover of the FA Cup as it was, I'm afraid. And I, like, I would like games like this to be finished where they should be finished during the 90 minutes or the 120 minutes. Now Saunders. Here's Marsh. Manaman starting extra time out on the right. Rosenthal and Saunders through the centre for Liverpool. And Gavin Johnson doing that vigil for Ipswich on the left-hand side. But with the eye to come in when the play builds up on the right, as he did so spectacularly. And that is why we're in extra time. Here's Milton who hasn't flagged. Both sides have one more substitute to use for Ipswich. It's Romeo Zondervan. It's Van Cosma for Liverpool. Kiwamia. It's gone out! And very nearly glory. Well, he can't believe it, can he? They give him too much space. Togo does not want to turn down an opportunity. And he just clips the top of the crossbar with Bruce Grobelard beaten. 
Well, he's always been a very popular player wherever he's uh, plied his trade for Goddard, known throughout the game as Sarge. Here's the one they call Dino. Houghton. And Saunders, Harkness. Liverpool, I'm sure, feel they've got to try and settle it within the half an hour. The penalty shootout is a lottery. And uh, their superior technique may not count so much from 12 yards. Right, making the ball his. Oh, and Forrest got his geography just right. Kiwomia and Goddard through the centre. Nickel keeping his eye on the ball. Arriving at speed is Milton again. Here's Witten who's kept the shape so successfully for Ipswich. I just feel that we haven't seen anything really from Kiwomia yet. And he might find more room in extra time. Another great tackle by Walk. But Marsh takes them on. Rosenthal, Walk's got back. Mulvey. That's himself for the shot. This time, Forrest wasn't unsighted. Well, we're going to see more and more of this as players get tired. They're going to be striking. It takes a little deflection. But Craig Forrest right behind it. One thing we didn't dwell on at the time, and I think it's proved a huge factor in Ipswich's revival, was the substitution that John Lyle made. Since Jason Dozell moved back into midfield, he really has got his team going and he's, he's looked a real class player Houghton in the middle of midfield now leaving uh, McManaman to try and express himself wide on the right but they have to get the ball to him and they haven't done that too often nor to uh, Walters when he was on oh, and it's, uh, getting a little uh, petulant here between uh, Kiwamia and Jones taking an understanding view of it their young players caught up in this pulsating tie we had to wait a while for the goals but they're coming now and is it Dazelle Grubel out but Dazelle Grubel racing out to the referee Well, I've just said that the tactical move of Jason Dezel at the midfield deserve more credit. He starts the move, plays it wide, but he makes a magnificent run through the heart of the Liverpool defence. I thought here he was just going to nick it over Bruce Grubbola. Bruce makes a brilliant save, but Jason Dezel's alive enough to chuck it in. Now the big question is, can Liverpool come back from one down? Well, Grubbola whether he was just trying to uh, point out possibly that there was another Ipswich player up alongside there and could have been offside but that was a problem for the linesman not the referee John Lyle a manager now who is wondering whether a win at Anfield is going to materialise for him at last but we were talking about Liverpool being the most dangerous when they're hurt before the game, after that defeat by Norwich. Well, if they were hurt then, they're in agony now. Just looking at Graham Sunis' face there as well. Terrible time for a manager. There is nothing he can do now. He's trying to make himself heard. He's trying to make tactical changes. Players can't hear him. Really can't hear him. Looks like he's calling on Isvan Cosma to bring him on to try one final throw of the dice for him. But he has got plenty of time still in the game. We're halfway through the first period of extra time. It's produced a goal and a fabulous moment here for Ipswich and for Jason Dezel in particular. It was uh, the rebound that, well, it could have bounced away. Grobelard did very well to get to the first shot. But luck wasn't with Liverpool after that. And Dezel did the necessary. Liverpool won. Ipswich 2 here's Milton and 
Johnson rather left it for others. McManaman. That's going to be a free kick to Liverpool. And a major problem for the second division side. Well, they've got themselves in front, Martin. And Ipswich now have to be brave enough to go and win it. You do feel if they think that their game's over, that they've done all they can and they're going to sit back and soak up the, all the pressure that no doubt Liverpool will exert, that they're bound to concede a goal. And this really a dangerous situation with people like Jan Moby around. The first sight for the home fans of Liverpool of Isfan Cosma. And almost coming on like... Uh, well, at the set piece, Mulvey! Goal! quieter games tonight Jan Moby but I don't suppose Gameson is okay this is a Moby special he obviously knew the cameras right in that corner bends it powers it directs it everything exactly right 2-2 two -two. well he's almost worth his place for his set pieces in the back of the net before Forrest could blink. Here's one for you. Now who's going to win it? <laughs> well, Forrest just had time to turn round and uh, assess the inevitable. Dazelle. Not only who's going to win, but how are they going to win? There must be a winner. So, they've swapped goals in the 90 minutes, they've already swapped goals in the first period of extra time. Houghton and Mulvey, the two for Liverpool. Johnson and Dazelle for Ipswich. And McManaman! What a turnaround! Well, sensations! Extra time at Anfield. Three goals in some six minutes. Two of them for Liverpool. And the going was tough. And the very tough really are going now. He did it in the last round. Steve McManaman here against Bristol. And that's a quite magnificently calm finish. Tight angle. Goalkeeper goes down. But very, very much like Kenny Douglas did in a European Cup final many years ago. That young man shows he's capable of holding his nerve and doing exactly the same. <laughs> Do I rather like Jan Mulvey? Steve McManaman hasn't really been centre stage tonight as he was here against Bristol Rovers. But what a superb goal. But most of all, what a time to get it. What we've always said, though, haven't we? The whole of the game was Ipswich had to concentrate for that length of time because the individual ability that Liverpool have on the field can win them a game in an instant. And that's the way it's proved. Two players who have been very quiet have produced two pieces of clinical finishing. And from being 2-1 up, within two or three minutes, they're 3-2 down. The sheer joy of football is that it is unscripted theatre who would dare write a script like this and you're seeing it unfolding before your very eyes Saunders Liverpool so hungry here's how now Jones who's a uh, Playing at left back with the departure of Harkness. That's not a strange position for him. He played his first match of the season at left back for Crew in a 7 4 game at Barnet. It could be 7 4 here. This is Goddard. And Johnson, just too tired. Understandably. Well, Liverpool are leaving it switch in their wake now. Saunders. Rosenthal chugging into the centre, McManaman is there. Houghton! Well, 
Well, the Ipswich players really have given their all, Martin, and there really are some tired legs there. Magnificent drill from Ray Houghton, but they really feel that the one last effort may well be beyond them. I hate saying that because of the way this game's going, but they have got some tremendously tired legs out there. And also tired minds as well, because it's easy to sit up here and say, well, if you're an Ipswich player, you could be reminding yourself you were one down for a long time in normal time and managed to solve the puzzle. But when you uh, had the joy of being in front, the ecstasy of leading at Liverpool, but John Lyle's seen it all before. He knows the pedigree here. And that pedigree, although it's been revealed late, has certainly been revealed. Linegan. Here's Houghton. But neither side has had the luxury of being two goals in front. Liverpool looking for that. Houghton. Didn't want to hit it straight away. Milton. His nerve is standing the test. John Lyle, of course, is uh, Romeo Zondervan on the bench. He's one last throw, and I'm just wondering if, he, if he'll try in the second half of extra time whether just to put some fresh legs on there. This, uh, I suppose, should be a secret, but I'm going to spill it to the viewers. There was a very happy Aston Villa reaction up here on the gantry when Ipswich went in front. <laughs> And uh, that's not just Andy Gray, the youth team coach, uh, Richard Money, is up here alongside us as well. It suggests to me... All it was was a uh, reaction to some wonderful goals, that was all. <laughs> Who are you trying to kid? <laughs> he weren't jumping up when Jan Mulby scored. <laughs> Here's Kiwamia. Now Witten. He looks for a goal of thrilling dimensions as well oh, what a period of extra time this has been the lead has swapped it went first to Ipswich with Jason Dazelle that was 2-1 Jan Mulvey then made his mark with a stunning free kick and straight away as Ipswich were still coming to terms with that Steve McManaman struck and with 15 minutes to go and still the prospect of penalties if Ipswich can find something extra in extra time it's Liverpool 3 Ipswich Town 2 turn around straight away well they've got to dig deep now Ipswich players it's been a huge effort for them behind for most of the second half and they've dug in and they've worked hard now they've got to do it all again one last throw settled here West Ham and Sunderland still to come and that might take you on to uh, watching the cricket as well by the time we get home that's uh, the button I'll be pushing on my television Sky Sports <laughs> I almost wish I had stayed at home these last three nights <laughs> got up here's Stockwell Well, you can bet on opportunities are plenty now. There's so much fatigue in the football, but it's making for thrills. Well, what a run. But this man is one of the best strikers of a ball in football, Martin. Has been throughout his career. And he can do better. He'll be absolutely disgusted with himself if he didn't hit the target. The shirts are blue, just like Everton's were last season. Shades of the uh, four-all draw. Uh, Goodison Park, we were privileged then. They're not going to put us through that again, are they? <laughs> Got on. Gazelle. And uh, took a while to pick himself up. Helped by Houghton reflecting the uh, excellent spirit that has been between the two sides what was so uh, disappointing 10 days ago when you see how this match has panned out now 
the quality of football that would have been displayed at Portman Road but for that terrible win. Well, we've had to wait for it, but it's been well worth waiting for. And it isn't over yet. McManaman. Lineker launching himself one more, once more. Now Rosenthal for Liverpool. Saunders going to the left. Jones is over there as well. Mulby. Who's got the lungs? Who's got the legs? Liverpool have got the ball. McManaman teasing. And the cop don't want to see this, which is to their credit, although you can hardly blame Liverpool for trying to draw breath. It is a little out of character here, but that's a compliment to Ipswich. They forced Liverpool, Mike Marsh would say, to play the ball back then. Mulvey. Rosenthal. Saunders in the centre. He's up. And uh, once again, in the uh, nick of time, Ipswich found a player, but it was John Walk who's damaged himself in the process. And uh, in went Thompson into the back of McManaman John Walker seized up I do think now that Old Age is keeping up on Warky isn't it it was quite a magnificent header that he cleared away from Dean Saunderson whose eyes must have lit up when Ronnie Rosenthal dinks this one look he pulls behind David Lennigan but watch what come from nowhere to get a brilliant clearing header and that's just cramp he's gone down with Well, they may need Romeo Zondervan now. The Dutchman, who's been in England a good while, first of all with West Bromwich Albion, and with it switch since 1984, can play at the back, as well as in midfield. They're trying to put Walk back together again. And I can tell you, if John Watt says no, you can guarantee it's a lot. It must be pretty serious, Grant Martin. I'm disappointed with the cop. They haven't come up uh, with any uh, variations of "You'll Never Walk, John Walk." <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not exactly walking either, is he? He's, uh, but he's <laughs> trying to uh, stand his ground. Mulby will take the free kick. That's, that's menacing. And uh, Marsh. Trying to sweep it goalwards. But that's brilliant thinking from Jan Moby, isn't it? When everyone's probably tired, Ipswich defenders are tired, they expect him just, it's going to be lunged into the box, and he just tries to pick out Mike Marsh at the edge of the box. Well, it's been live football all the way on Sky Sports this week, and it's almost as if we've been building to this climax. It's what we always say though, Mark, as well. It's nothing quite like being there, is there? Saunders. Stockwell ahead of Rosenthal. The concern with Ipswich is obviously the state of John Walk. John Lyle just trying to get a message out there, but I think Walk's sending one back simply by uh, staying put. But there's no need for him now to uh, labour particularly through it if it's going to let Liverpool in again. But uh, perhaps he thinks it'll be his last game on this famous ground. Saunders. A fourth goal for Liverpool now, and I think we will be sure we'll be playing Aston Villa, entertaining Aston Villa in the quarter-finals. Game which will be played a week on Sunday. And Liverpool are having to put in a lot of work to get there. They've got to 
play in Europe as well prior to uh, that cup meeting. And still they're counting their casualties. And here's Cosma. Milton playing for the goal kick. But it's ended as a corner. He can be very proud of his performance tonight. So can they all, Martin. Every player, all 22, 23, 24, how many it is that's been on. They've all contributed to a marvellous exhibition of football. Looks it's just leaving Kiwami up. Because they have to defend at the moment. McManaman. Now they can break out. Who can make the run? It's a Stockwell. And uh, he's changed direction well to keep it in. Saunders, just for a moment, looks as though they might fashion a similar move to the one that brought Johnson the first Ipswich goal. Here he is, Johnson again. It's well hit, there was no possible chance of Grovelaar fumbling that once he saw Goddard herring in for the rebound. Bruce knew he had to hang on. The only thing he did wrong there, Gavin Joyce, and he hit it too well. Witted. Kiwomia asked to chase that by Walk. It's which trying to get to the knockdown. And Nicol has hurt himself, I think, in stretching for that one. That's Milton. And Steve Nicol, who's only just back from a groin strain had to go for a ball that was dropping awkwardly then and certainly felt some damage to a leg muscle and I think that little flurry there that we've had from Richards that's an answer to anyone who thinks that they might have given this tie up still driving forward given every ounce of energy they've got well Graham Souness called for fighting spirit and in the end he got it and what a fight they've had to put up but though Ipswich caught them on the chin they haven't been able to uh, knock them out McManaman well his goal the crucial one at the moment six minutes left Dizel. Milton, oh, Kiwami was onside too. Got up. Kiwami's offside now. It's been a learning process over the two matches for Chris Kiwami. 15 goals for Ipswich this season, their top scorer, but scarcely a sight of goal in the two cup ties. And happily, uh, he's been willing to make runs for others. Yes, it won't do him any harm, Martin. You, 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 as long as he learns from it. He'll probably go home and he'll, he'll sit around and he'll think, you know, that's what I've got to do. These are the type of players, I've, if I want to be the very best, if I want to play at the top end of football, these are the type of players I have to be able to play against week in and week out. Walk. And Thompson did well to reach that. Cosma reacted quickly for Liverpool. They would find a way through here if they're of a mind to do so. Be to take their time with the passes, but Rosenthal, of course, has got a point or two to try and prove to Graham Souness. He'd like to have a lower number on his back than the one that he's got on tonight. And John Walk comes off here, and that will be recognised all around the ground with a standing ovation and he waves to the cop a wave perhaps a farewell a wonderful career more than 200 goals most of them for Ipswich great time here with Liverpool in the mid 80s 
more to come, I'm sure, in the second division, but maybe never again at Anfield. That was a magnificent gesture, wasn't it, from the whole ground. Great ovation for John Moore. Great to see. And the uh, handshake started on the touchline with Graham Souness. Remember, John Walk was brought to Liverpool in the first place when Graham Souness indicated he was going to earn his living in Italy. Trying to earn the ball for Ipswich was Kiwamia. And Mick McGibbon and John Lyle feel that that should have gone the other way. <laughs> I think they made have something of a case there. <laughs> If I do, it's not the first challenge, it's this one that's coming up. <laughs> About a six of one half a dozen, isn't it? Well, I think he's been penalised for handball. <laughs> he has. <laughs> Cosma, who's played in one major final already this season. The Skull Cup final with Dunfermline in Scotland. Thompson. Room for him to swing that left foot, which does propel the ball vast distances. Well, we are now really into the countdown. Two minutes left. The two substitutes combined for Liverpool. Cosmos cross. Dazelle. Stockwell racing to the right, Dazelle taking Liverpool on, Goddard, Dazelle again, Kiwami, that's out, and that in an instant really summed up the, the uh, night for Chris Kiwami. It's been very frustrating for him, hasn't it? But the skills of Jason Dazelle again showing through there, didn't they? And the Trevor Brooking style as well. Exactly. Kiwami got to it that time, got up. And then again, even allowing for the freshness of Rosenthal, was able to cope with that. Witten looks to flick it on, Ipswich style. Here he is again. Goddard jogging into the centre and uh, Witten trying to be uh, a little ambitious with the pass rather than getting the ball into the box Liverpool the best way to end any anxiety is to get another goal Forrest always nerve-wracking for goalkeepers now when they come out but there's really no danger that Rosenthal was going to force him into a reckless challenge but it's Time that's on Liverpool's side, as well as the scoreline, after a mammoth tie here. I don't think the referee saw that. Here's McManaman. It's just keep the ball tame now for Liverpool, isn't it? Marsh, they're almost there, but how hard they've had to work. Houghton on his back off Stockwell but for a corner well Ipswich playing at Anfield for the 30th time they still haven't won but well it's been a really heroic attempt here yeah, the one thing they did wrong Mark they just didn't manage to hold on to the lead long enough Allowed Liverpool to hit back almost immediately, and that was the downfall. 1-0 it went to Liverpool with Ray Houghton, 1-1 with Gavin Johnson's great header. Then Jason Dazelle seemed to be uh, sending the second division thrive into the last eight of the FA Cup. But then came Liverpool, vintage Liverpool. The reply was swift, it was decisive through Mulvey. And Steve McManaman and Liverpool are through to the quarter-finals. And it really has set up a most intriguing match against Aston Villa a week on Sunday. And if it's a half as good as this one, it will be richly entertaining. Anfield remains unconquered by Ipswich, but they've shown 
what quality with John Walker inspiration again. What quality John Lyle has at his disposal. And they will certainly, over the remainder of the season, have an extra injection of confidence for the second division the way they perform here. But in the end, it's Liverpool's night. Let's get a reaction straight away from their manager, Graham Souness. He's with David Livingston. Graham, you're through to the last eight. Uh, at what cost to your voice and your heart? Well, I think uh, it might have been good television, David, but certainly um, I don't think it's good for your health when it um, develops like that. We, we played a wee bit in the first half, I felt. Um, second half, Ipswich were better than us. I felt an extra time we shaded it. It was exciting football, it's cup tie football. That's what, that's what cup tie football is about. We're delighted to be in the next round. I had players who had to go out there and grit their teeth tonight. Um, four of them carrying injuries. And I'm, I've just got to be grateful we're through. Ipswich, Ipswich battled very hard and made life extremely difficult for us. A touching moment there for you when John Walk went off. Yeah, he's an old... I didn't... I'm just going to swear to him. No, he done extremely well. He held them together at the back, both in the first game and, and in this game tonight. And he's... Um, well done, sir. And, and well, he is. Well hey, yes, John, that was a, a nice moment when you come off. Uh, a nice handshake there. How, how emotional was it for you? Oh, well, as I say, it was a good reaction from the cop. You know, they gave us a good welcome, but I thought we were very unlucky tonight. And I thought we proved we're a good team. What was the problem then when you went ahead? Why couldn't you hold it? I just just two good goals, two good goals out of the blue actually. But I thought it wasn't a free kick, a second goal, but that's beside the point. Graham, when you went dog all night about what should have been, what shouldn't have been, I would say that Ipswich came here in over 90 minutes certainly to get something from the game. The second half they were better than us for most of the second half. Um, they, if they can play like that, then they'll be in the first division next year. It's what John Lyon must do, and it's what he must do is get his players playing with that spirit and that enthusiasm. As they did tonight. What about you in the quarterfinals against Aston Villa? Um, well, maybe Ronnie, everyone, Phil, myself, our voices will be back by then. But we're delighted to get through tonight. That was a hard game for us. John, the future for John Walk? Well, the future is I hope we're in the first division. We hope against Liverpool next year. Both of you, thanks very much. Thanks for a great game. Fabulous. It's catching, isn't it? Graham Sinner has got a voice like me. <laughs> Wonderful entertainment. Trust me, don't go away. We have got a terrific match coming up from Upton Park, West Ham and Sunderland. You won't want to miss that. Stay with us.